And you have 10 callers that are sitting in their house in Egypt, and you're calling on a house somewhere in Georgia, and you just closed a deal for $102,000. That's right. It's the best business ever, isn't it? So you've got a pretty healthy bank account. I mean, nothing crazy, but something that is decent. You have a good um, paying job that you've worked hard at, um, but you're an entrepreneur at heart. You, you know that there's, there's something different out there for you. You know that you could do more, you could be of more service uh, while, while you're able to. While you have energy, while you have enthusiasm, while you have ideas. So you decide to be brave and you jump into the world of real estate investing. So you start going down the rabbit hole, you start doing research, you start figuring out what, what path, what strategy, what's the right model for me to follow. And then you discover wholesaling. And then you understand, wow, this is a great way to build a nice, healthy bank account. This is a nice way to build an actual business. This is a nice way to go. And, uh, and you can see it. You can see it on the horizon, the goal of owning rental properties and getting cash flow and paying those properties off so that there's no debt and and you can keep these properties for forever and build real generational wealth with these properties you see it all in front of you and you put together a plan and you put together a five-year plan to be able to really start building this up and really doing this business and then at the end of the five years you look back and you already have 15 rentals that are paid off you've got a business that is producing 50 over 50 wholesale deals every single year you've got a business that is flipping 10 properties a year and just getting started what an incredible vision you have what an incredible opportunity real estate investing gives you and that's the story of the gentleman that i have the incredible real estate investor real estate entrepreneur that we're going to have deep dive and really understand how he got to where he is in five short years, uh, putting in the work, um, d- keeping the discipline, keeping uh, and, and buying everything, by the way, uh, with cash and not using any leverage. I'd like to introduce to the podcast from Chicago, Illinois, Abdullah Gafar. Abdullah, welcome to the Wholesaling Inc. podcast. I appreciate the intro, man. Appreciate it's exciting. Me. I mean, listen, I, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just going through the resume of what you've been able to accomplish in the last five years is absolutely incredible. I think the rest of the time in the podcast, I'm going to just pull apart your story and your techniques and, and, and so that other people can follow the path that you're, you're going down because it's absolutely incredible. You've got $10,000 a month in passive income right now from your rentals that you own free and clear. And uh, you've got a business, you've got 10 cold callers, you've got two acquisition managers. You're really not working in the business anymore. You're working on the business. It, it wasn't always that way. Uh, you're doing flips. You're doing incredible things. Um, why did you think that you could do this? Like what, what inside you made you think that, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit this cushy IT job. Um, you know, that I've had my whole life path going towards that, and I'm going to go in a totally different direction. What made you believe that you could do that? Man, as a kid, I was told that the most millionaires are made in real estate. And then, you know, back in 2017, 2018, 19, there was not a lot of people talking about, um, you know, real estate investing, right? You were one of the first ones that actually spoke about, hey, there's actually a loophole of wholesaling deals, right? Selling paper. And then building, you know, with that capital, building generational wealth. So, you know, that really inspired me. And knowing that the most millionaires are made in real estate, I was like, man, I need to leave this cushion and become, you know, the 1%, right? Or get into real estate investing and, you know, acquire some assets, right? So, yeah, man, it just took that leap. And yeah, but did you always believe? I mean, it's it, there, there, there's a saying, right? Uh, be, do, have, right? You got to believe. You got to be that person 
uh, before you can start taking the action, right? You got to believe that you can you can accomplish something, or you're just not going to take that first step. You're not going to have the courage to be able to do it, and and it, you probably just don't have. It's probably just not in your instincts to be able to do it. You'd be you'd be attracted to doing something else with your life. Why are you attracted to building wealth and being a real estate entrepreneur and 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 doing it with real estate? Like I mentioned, you know, the most millionaires are made in this industry. And I give all my things to God, you know. Um, I did a lot of, you know, before you get into it, you need to get educated, right? And, you know, the education that I received was from your courses. Um, yeah. So, you know, I give a huge shout out to you, man, for actually. Yeah, but were your, were your parents like, hey, you could be anything you want, go and do this. You can, like, were you, were, were you in a friend group that were like young entrepreneurs in high school? Like, how did you believe that you could just quit everything, drop everything and become a real estate entrepreneur? So that's what I'm getting to. Maybe I'm asking it silly. Gotcha. But. Yeah. So my father was in uh, real estate. He had a few rentals and everyone around me, like my cousins, um, they had a few rentals and, uh, you know, when I went to these, uh, real estate, uh, meetings, you know, these real estate seminars, I saw people there that were talking about, you know, uh, generational wealth and acquiring properties. And I was like, man, if these guys could do it, what makes me different? Right. I got blood going through my veins. They got blood going through their veins. It is, I'm, I'm no different than them. Right. I just need to be disciplined and just focus and just get at it. Right. So for the first year, two years, Starting, you know, when I started wholesaling, I didn't uh, really, you know, do any damage, right? I didn't really close my first deal until like eight months in to the business. Yeah. And then even like my first deal, it was like a few thousand dollars, right? But that gave me like that confidence. Hey, you know, I think it was like, I don't know, it was less than $5,000 for sure, right? Um, so that gave me the confidence like, hey, this is possible. And what, you know, what these people are talking about, brands talking about, hey, this actually works. Because back then I didn't have any capital. I was like, I need to build capital before I get into rentals, before I get into, um, you know, uh, acquiring real estate. So, yeah, that gave me the opportunity, man. The wholesaling gave me the opportunity to actually achieve all this stuff. And people around me supported me, like I said, my father, my cousins, um, and either, you know, and even friends around me that had rentals. Um, it's just surrounding yourself with the right people, right? You could surround yourself with the wrong people that don't know anything about real estate there aren't in that you know industry and you're going to be you know doing what they're doing but if you surround yourself with the right people that are in the space eventually you're going to get rentals eventually you're going to be you know one of those right one of the goats one of the so it's like yeah the five people you surround yourself with is like the people that you become right so i love it so what were you doing before what was your job before i was in the it industry i was a ba business analyst so you know, taking care of uh, clients, stakeholders, um, dealing with developers, QAs, you know. Um, yeah, it was pretty hectic, you know. And this was just a side side business for you? That's right, yeah. Once I found out about this through YouTube, it was through your videos, um, you know, I was like, yo, this, me and my brother actually came across your videos. And every night what we would do after we would come back from our work, we would just sit in my in my basement and just, you know, watch YouTube videos, right? Yeah. So you came up, we're like, hey, man, let's type in, you know, Brand Daniels, TTP, let's see what, you know, let's see what he's talking about. And yeah. then, yeah, man, just kept on watching your videos. And you were, you were consistent, too. You would, you would post, uh, you know, pretty frequently. So just watching your videos just inspired us, you know. And I was like, yo, we just need to talk to more people. That's what it comes down to, right? And then, like I said, you know, I was like, man, I don't have that much time to talk to people. But what I could do is we could hire, you know, people for $4 an hour. Because I'm worth more than just you know that price, so we hired multiple people at four dollars an hour, and just had them talk to people, um, you know, because we we barely had time. But in the beginning, we were talking to people, but eventually came to a point where like, hey, we need to leverage the cash that we have, yep, for people to talk to people, you know. Love so. it. Yeah. Love it. I call that a level three business. You know, at first it's just you. The second level is you and like a VA that that does some like kind of operation management. And then the third level is, is starting to hire people for lead generation, uh, whether that be through text message marketing or through, um, you know, picking up the phone and calling people. So how many people did you hire? We had three cold callers um, in the beginning and then it just went up from there. You know, How'd you find them? Uh, P, the uh, online.ph. It was like this uh, Philippines website. Yeah, it was uh, that. And then um, 
there was like a you know few people we knew for like uh one of my friends uh was in um he met, he recommended someone through Fiverr or Upwork you know so we we got him and then we took him out that platform and he did like a different contract between us it was a uh, you know so just finding people through these uh, platforms you know PH Fiverr Upwork and just negotiating their salary and uh that's basically how we found him how do you find good talent how do you find good talent you just gotta be optimistic. You just gotta, you gotta talk to people, right? Just talk to more people. Just, you mean interview more people? Interview more people, correct? Yeah. You just need to, you know, figure out what they're good, you know, what they're good at, um, and especially when it comes to like these four or five dollar an hour VAs. It all, you know, English is everything, right? So it's like the pronunciation of words, uh, their accent. So we look, we look for that, right? So the first few VAs that we hired actually had a really bad accent, right? Um, so it was trial and error. So you know it wasn't really working out. We were getting a lot of um, a lot of no's, and uh, we weren't really getting that many deals. So we had to you know tweak up our business. We're like, hey, no, we need people to actually speak a little bit more fluent, you know, because we were getting virtual assistants for like two dollars an hour, right? That had horrible accents. And then we were like, you know, if we pay, you know, these uh, assistants a little bit more, three, four, five dollars an hour around there, we're gonna get better quality people, right? So it's just interviewing. Two dollar an hour people to five dollar an hour people, and then figuring out the sweet spot, right? And then once we figure out the sweet spot, we're like, okay, yeah, this is working. Let's just you know multiply on this, just duplicate this, and then just keep going. Love it. Would you? I I always suggest when you hire somebody uh, that's going to make your calls, a phone prospector that's going to make your calls, that every call over three minutes to audit when they get started. Um, at least for the first six weeks, maybe two months, it just depends. But if they get into a conversation that's over three minutes, I want to see what's going on. How can I help them? How can I give them the tools to be better? How do I, how do I, um, how do I make them better listeners and to ask better questions, right? Develop that, not make them develop that in them. And, um, that works out really well. You know, just auditing those calls and making sure that if there is some some objection that they can't get over, that I give them the response to it so that they can write it down, so that they can use it time and time again. Do you do anything like that? Like, how do you train your VAs so that they're giving you quality leads? Because if you got 10 VAs, that means they're sending you a lot of leads. And the, one of the risks that you run is... Um, non-quality leads are going to hide all the best leads and that, and it actually, um, you know, really slows down your business as opposed to speeds it up. So how do you cut through all that so that you are getting the best leads from your callers? Right. So as of right now, right now that I do have 10 callers, uh, we actually have a certain criteria that we follow and I also have a, a TC, right? Uh, I mean, QC, so quality control. So she's the one that's monitoring everything, going, listening to, you know, listening to all the calls, making sure, like you mentioned, uh, you know, if there's a, look, look at their rebuttals, uh, look at the way they talk, if they have any questions. And what we do, we actually have a scrum meeting. So I took this from the IT industry. So every morning, at 11 o'clock, we have a 10-minute scrum meeting, right? So all our VAs are there, our acquisitions are there, our, um, you know, TC, our uh, dispo, everyone's there. The whole team's there, right? So then we're talking to the cold callers, you know, and asking them questions, saying, hey, what, you know, what kind of issues are you having? What kind of problems are you having? So we have that. But now it's to a point where they just tell, oh, we have a hot lead. We have this lead, that lead, or I'm talking to this, you know? And we, do, we just talk about our leads that are, you know, uh, that we came across yesterday and then our acquisition saying, hey, yeah, uh, you know, like give an example. Hey, Rose, you brought a great lead. We're going to make 70 on this lead that, are, you know, just exciting everybody. Right. Um, so, yeah, just you need that that community. You need that communication every they morning. They need to feel like they're part of your business. Exactly. Exactly. That's what it is. You got it. And they're family at this point with their family. Right. Yeah. Like majority of my um, virtual assistants now are in uh, Egypt. Right. So I actually flew down to Egypt met my acquisition and you know my callers yeah you know took them out to eat we went uh camels riding to the pyramids all that stuff right so you just need to make them feel like family yeah, incredible so. i love that so yeah. when the leads come in who takes care of them so when the cold call leads come in warm leads um our acquisition takes care of them and then you know either he's given offers and if they don't pick up they just go to um 
the lead manager, lead manager is following, the, following up with the leads, and once they get them on a call, they'll do a live transfer to the acquisition. So it's just like, you know, it's like a sequence, right? It's just like, callers bring the leads, acquisition takes control, if they don't pick up or, you know, they're not interested or they're just, you know, playing games, just put it back in the follow-up, lead manager just follows up with them, and just, you know, it's just rinse and repeat. I love it. I love it. And and I I mentioned it before we started, but you're in Illinois. In Illinois, you need to have a real estate license to wholesale. Um, and it's such an advantage. I mean, if you listen, guys, if you're in Illinois and you're doing virtual wholesaling, I get it. You don't want to get your license. You don't want to go through the, the 90 hours, literally 90 hours of school and take the tests and pass that because you don't like tests or you're bad at tests or you, you were tired of doing tests. So you never did it after high school or college or whatever else. Do it. Do it or hire somebody that has a license on your team because it is such an advantage in Chicago, in Illinois in general, but especially in Chicago um, when you have a tremendous amount of opportunities because there's so many properties. Um, you, you need to be able to do that. I mean, just take that jump and do that. And uh, if you need help, I'll connect you with uh, Abdullah later uh, when he lets us know how you can reach, how we can reach out to him. Um, but that's that's amazing. So, but when you were starting, were all the leads going to you? I mean, yeah. you you had these calls. You're still working your IT job. You get the you get the leads coming in. You do the lead follow up, set the appointments, or are you just making offers um, over uh, over the phone. So yeah, when when I first got started, I had cold callers bringing in the warm leads. I wouldn't get to them right away. It would take me like a day, two days. So you know, I was I was dragging on these leads because after my job would be you know over, I'd come home around five, six o'clock, and then I would get the the time to actually call these leads and figure out a you know an offer and all that stuff, right? And then I figured out, hey, this is not the efficient way of doing things. I'm actually losing a lot of leads this way. And then I made the move. I was like, hey, I need an acquisition, right? I need someone that is working full-time giving offers. So that's basically what I, you know, integrated to the company. So, you know, I when I started the business, I was like, I got to look at this as a business owner, right? I don't want to work in the business because everything that I'm hiring out has a price value to it, right? Cold callers, $4 an hour. Lead manager, $6 an hour. Acquisition, $8 an hour. I'm like, I'm worth more than all of these numbers. So I got to think like a business owner and hire out all these positions and oversee the business. So, you know, as a, you know, you know, as an entrepreneur and as a, you know, small business owner, I was like, hey, I got to look at this this way. Right. And never look at it. Never. I always from the beginning, I never wanted to work in the business. I always wanted to work on the business. Right. So with that mindset, I was like, hey, if I'm building my team, I need to build it like this. Right. How many deals did you do before you started building out your team i mean obviously you had your callers but um did you just start with an acquisition manager and just found somebody that was amazing yeah i thought we trained them right they were in a real acquisition we had to train them to basically become an acquisition yeah. um yeah we did a few deals like uh less than a dozen deals for sure you know it was a few deals and then once like it was like my first deal made me realize hey this is real, right? So that's all I needed. I needed that motivation. Okay, I just needed that confidence. Okay, this is real. I just need to put the systems and processes in place to make sure this is an actual company, right? Turn this into a business. Mm -hmm. So it was just that first deal that made me realize, hey, I need to build a team around this. So Amazing. And so did you find them as a virtual acquisition managers as well? Or do they live in town with you? No, they're they're all overseas. You know, I couldn't really afford anyone in house, right? Because paying them twenty, thirty, forty dollars an hour doesn't make sense, right? So everything that I have, they're all virtual. Every every person that I have on my team is all virtual. So from the beginning, I was like, hey, I'm, if I'm hiring anyone out, I'm hiring them overseas, and you know, training them overseas, and you know, training them through Zoom, and uh, yeah, I just want to have. So what do you pay your acquisition managers? Like eight dollars an hour. <laughs> yeah. And, and then do they get, I mean, are they bonused? Yeah, commission, right? We do have a commission structure. Uh, so it's 3% uh, if it's under, yep. you know, a, a certain amount. And then it all depends. If I'm making $100,000 on a, you know, on a, you know, on a fee, I'll take care of them, right? But I give them like sure. a 3% flat. 
you know, and then if, you know, if I'm making a good amount of money, if we do great this month, I'll give them an extra bonus, you know, a few hundred dollars here and there, or I might give them 5% on a deal, stuff like that, right? How, do you, take- how do you find really good salespeople that are going to take care of your American property owners, for the most part, I would assume, that live, are they in Egypt as well? Yeah. So how, do you, how do you find people that, that, that can do a great job closing those deals and they've never set foot in Chicago. Exactly. So like I mentioned, I took that, what I learned in the IT industry, right? The scrum meeting. So yep. I implemented that to my team. So I didn't have that much time. I only had 10 minutes a day, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes a day to talk to my team, to motivate them, to give them, you know, some insights and, you know, um, give them scripts and go over, you know, a few rebuttals and I'm finding rebuttal scripts from you and just putting them all together and just, you know, letting them know, hey, this is what it is, right? You guys need yeah. to learn this yourself. And I used to, some of the times I used to tell them, hey, watch, watch Brand Daniel's videos, watch TTP's videos, right? Yeah. Then, yeah, that's basically what it came down to, you know? I just, love it. This way, yeah. Simple business. Yeah. You know, and, and listen, if they have to have that, that fire in their belly. You know what I mean? Acquisition managers, um, listen, you can, you can learn an incredible amount about the sales process. You can learn an incredible amount about uh, NLP training and communicating effectively and doing all that. But I am telling you that the, the people that are just natural communicators, in my opinion, have always been the best. And then you just give them the right tools and give them enough reps and they're going to they're 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 going to be amazing but they have to have that ignition inside of them. You know what I mean? If they have ignition and you've got uh you give them enough reps and you put them in with a model or or somebody that has mastered what they're learning, uh wow, powerful, absolutely powerful. And uh it's it, it's incredible that that you found somebody at $8 an hour in Egypt that was able to do it. Yeah. No no doubt. It's incredible. Yeah, no, it is, man. It's just, uh, I give all my things to God. You know, he's, he put me in a place and he blessed me with all this, right? Without him, you know, I wouldn't be able to do it, right? So just have faith, man. That's what I give everyone that's listening here. Just got to have faith and just got to be consistent, right? Uh, Just got to ask him. I used to ask him for this, you know, I was like, hey, God, just help me find somebody that could help me, you know, better my company. And then he'll just put the puzzle pieces together. You You know, it's just like from one reference to one, you know, relationship to another it just things come together right it's just uh yeah well the incredible thing also i mean listen you're building a business these are family you're doing it right you know when when you take it as people people work with you not for you you know when you treat them like family when you talk to them for 10 or 15 minutes every single day when you pour into them when you give them the right resources when you really nurture the relationship um, you understand that a business, all a business is, is like one person or a couple people have a vision and then they get other people to, to, um, support that vision, right? That's all a business is. That's exactly. all a business is. It's like some people have a vision and other people want to get on, get involved. And as a leader, you have to make sure that they understand that you are still in this. You are still, you are still excited about this business. You are still, you still want to support them and, and, uh, and, 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 um, recognize them for the, the work that they've done and the incredible opportunities they, that they brought into your life and you're bringing into their life. It's incredible. Being a business owner is, is, just just it's incredibly rewarding. It just is. It's the best. I mean, it's it's just incredible that we can just take something that's in a vision in our head, a belief in our head, and turn it into real life, and and then bring other people on board, and we're all blessed by it. I yeah. mean, absolutely incredible. Not only that, but then when you do start making that income, and you do replace your income, and you do get into this business full time, then all of a sudden you have excess funds that you go out and buy properties cash. Exactly. Why yeah. not just go baller, bro? Why not just like you know what I mean? Yeah. Why 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 invest your money in into properties when you could just go and you know. You only live once type of attitude. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I get you, man. It's still generational wealth, right? Um, 
I don't do this for myself. I do this for my kids and my kids' kids, right? So from the generation. Um, so that's how I've been taught, you know. And, uh, yeah, man, it's just uh, you got to make sure the generation is good. Um, but, yeah, man, I still, like, spoil myself here and there, right? You still got to take care what of yourself. What do you do? Like, give, me, give me something that you spoil yourself with. Because I'm thinking, here, here, here's Abdullah. He's he's making this money. He's just he's he's living on like two thousand dollars a month, and he's putting it all into these properties, and he's building this big, huge portfolio, almost like the rich dad, poor dad story, you know. And his rich dad drives the old rickety truck, and he wears you know holy pants and and whatever, and he doesn't dress all up. But then all of a sudden, everything flips, and he's like this huge multi, multi, multi millionaire. Um, but what do you what do you what do you do what do you what do you spoil yourself with a little bit? Oh man, just uh, you know a few things here and there. You know, just you know I travel a lot, right? So I spoiled myself with that. Um, you know, clothes, jewelry, stuff like that, right? Um, just basic stuff, man. Nothing, nothing too crazy, right? Love it. Yeah. Good. I think it's important. I always like setting aside for big deals, setting aside like $500 for something, uh, whether it's like a nice meal, like a coursed out fancy meal or uh, a nice pen or like something goofy, you know, um, some shoes or something. Uh, I think that that's good. It's, it's when you start adding zeros to that, that bonus that uh, it starts getting a little uh, crazy when you should be buying more assets, um, in my opinion. But you know what? Everybody can live their life. So let's break down a deal. I want to I ring this victory bell. Let's break down a deal that you went through. I'm going to pick it all apart, how you found it, uh, what was the situation with the property owner, what you make on it, all of those things. So uh, whatever deal you want to talk about, let's get into it. Gotcha. So let's talk about this uh, six-figure deal I just did, right? Um, so how this happened is there's multiple ways, right, to get data. I don't get anything from like batch leads or prop stream, anything like that, right? I don't focus on niche data. Um, I believe in you know quality and quantity. So what I usually do for the for the quality side of things, I use uh, you know uh, one guy that I met, Josh, and he basically scrapes fresh data for me, right? So I pick up the whole county records, right? I don't even you know. Uh, go niche, I just pick up the whole county. I'll give you an example, like DeKalb County, Cook County, I'll just pick up the whole county, and then I'll have my callers just call in and find motivation, right? Anyone that's interested in selling. So quality and quantity, right? Um, quantity of calls, right? So when I have 10 callers calling, when one caller can make 300 calls, and I got 10 of them now making, you know, 3,000 plus calls, right? So it's just all about, uh, you know, quantity of calls. Real so quick, that, jo Josh is who? Who is this... Josh, mysterious Josh character. Josh, his uh, Instagram or his company is called like Kind Script Tracing. Josh, okay. yeah. If you guys want to find him on Instagram, Josh, um, I don't know his actual username, but yeah. okay. Yeah, so I use him for all my data. I pick up whole counties from him, um, and then yeah, just give it to my callers and start calling, right? And then some of the best deals I ever found were from picking up counties because they're not, you know, because when you pick up stuff from batch, right, uh, you pick up, you know, high equity, um, absentee, right, you pick up, you know, whatever, 20,000 records, a thousand different wholesalers are picking up the same exact records. So what I realized, I was like, when you call these people, they're saying, hey, stop calling me or, hey, I got a hundred different calls. I'm not selling my property or I already sold my property, right? So you get those type of things. And when I realized that, hey, if I pick up these county records, there's a lot of um, a lot of people, a lot, you know, a lot of people that we reach out to that are basically untapped, right? They haven't heard a call before, right? So they you just call everybody. Call everybody. When you right? say you're calling the county, you're calling every single house in the county. Exactly. They're not on a specialized list. They're not on uh, driving for dollars. They're just you're just calling through the phone book. Exactly. The whole okay. county. I'm trying to yep. figure it out. Right. I don't know if that's the most efficient way, but I find some of the best. Not, not if you're doing it yourself. I mean, right. definitely focus it down. But if you've got a team, of, if you got horsepower, like 10 callers, um, yeah, it's a it's a smart idea. Yeah. So some of the like some of the leads that we, you know, some of the closings that we did, I think we did like three or four uh, this year. And it was like very low equity. Right. They bought it maybe like two years, three years ago. And, you know, something happened. They want to sell. Right. So you won't even find those on you know, a motivated list, right? Until you call right. them, you know, find the motivation yourself. So, you know, stuff like that. And then 
Yeah, just call on the, you know, and then we found the the lead that we found that made us, uh, you know, six figures on. Um, it was their primary residence. A tree fell on it. So, and then they went to Florida. They're like, hey, we had another place there. So we went to Florida. And one of my callers called them, sent it to the acquisition. And they were thinking about basically demoing the property and selling it, selling the land because they knew the land was worth money. Yeah. But they knew the property wasn't really worth much because it was, it was, uh, you know, it was a full demo, right? Um, so, you know, my cousin said, hey, no, you know, we'll buy it as is, right, as we train them. Like, no, it doesn't matter what it is, what condition, you know, if the, if the numbers make sense, we get a good enough offer, you know, good enough, uh, we negotiate to where it makes sense for us, lock it up, right? So we locked it up um, for 225 and we popped it off for 332 and after all the you know closing costs and we double closed on this too right so after paying all these fees and everything we made a uh, $102,000 on this uh, on this uh, deal come on here we go 102,000 dollars from one conversation so I want to unpack a couple things. I assume that when the the tree fell on their house, they probably did an insurance claim, right? Um, I'm not sure if they did an insurance claim. Um, they just wanted to sell it as is. They were old people. They're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. They just wanted to sell it as is. Typically, um, typically when that happens, they're going to get an insurance check, and then they decide, do I want to fix this up or do I not? Do I want to just sell it as is? A lot of people, um, like with fire damage properties, they're just like, you know what, I'll just sell it for whatever it's worth right now. I've got my money here. I'm going to put that into another property. Um, so it actually ends up being a win-win when some of the <laughs> win 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 when some of these things um happen one of these freak accidents happen uh like a fire or, or a tree falling through the fa falling through the roof um 225 yeah. is that what they wanted initially no they wanted 300,000 for the property okay so we went back and forth with the seller we're like hey it needs more work than expected so we had someone go down there you know from like Thumbtack and Rabbit Task, you know, we utilize those um, those softwares a lot. So we just had someone go down there, take a look at it, take some pictures, send it over Which to us. Which software? Say it again. Uh, Thumbtack and Rabbit Task. Those two, uh, so, you know, platforms. And what do they do? Uh, we just find, you know, someone for like $50 to $100 to go down there, take pictures of the properties. You know, if the sellers don't want to, you know, send you pictures, you just utilize those guys, you know? It's phenomenal. So... I mean, is this driving distance from your house? Like, could you have gone yourself? No, this wasn't actually, an, you know, we do wholesale nationwide. So this deal was somewhere in Atlanta. In yeah. Atlanta? Yeah. So you're yeah. calling. So are you pulling counties all over, like, the whole country? Yeah, so there's 400 counties in uh, right. America, right? So we're picking up counties, like, every month, every two months, just picking up different, different counties. What yeah. does it cost you to pick up a county? Um, it all depends how many records. Uh, so there's smaller counties uh, that cost you know anywhere from two you know two three thousand dollars, and there's some counties that cost ten thousand dollars, right? Yep. So it all depends on uh, how many records you know. My guy Josh tells me, hey, this you know we got seventy five k records here, we got you know eight hundred rec eight hundred thousand records here. So whatever he tells me, I'm just like, okay, whatever it is, just send it over, you know. Awesome. So, awesome. Yeah. And so you're you're just man. How are you finding your buyers for these? Investor Lift. Man. Just, Investor Lift. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that platform is. So matter. why didn't you just stay in Chicago? Why are you doing it nationwide? Man, I've seen bigger spreads in nationwide. Like the six-figure flip. Yeah, my six-figure deals. Yeah, man, it's nationwide. Chicago, like the average spread is like 20000 22000 right. you know? But, uh, yeah, there's more money out in different states for sure. So you never went to this property. Somebody part of your company never went to this property. You went and paid somebody fifty to hundred dollars from Thumbtack or Robert Rabbit Task. By the way, both great, great, great uh, resources to have, especially if you've got a property that needs some pictures or you need somebody to go represent you. You can find somebody that'll dress professionally to go and give your offer. Um, we've done it with mobile notaries to go and uh, and get uh, the, the the agreement signed. Um, awesome. So you're sitting here in your house in Chicago uh, and you have 10 
callers that are sitting in their house in Egypt, and you're calling on a house somewhere in Georgia, and you just closed the deal for $102,000. That's right. It's the best business ever, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's the best, man, for sure. It's the best business ever. There are, I am telling you, every single second of every minute of every day, this happens. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it really does, and I hope this inspires everybody that's listening, everybody that's watching, that you can do this. You can absolutely, you are one conversation away from a deal of a lifetime. And it literally happens every second. A deal of a life happens every single second to somebody. And the more people you talk to, the more opportunities you're going to have to get the deal of a lifetime. I mean, 102000 were you making that at your IT job? A year, yeah. You know, so this is just one deal, right? So. One deal. One conversation that you never, you, did you ever talk to the property owner? No. My did team, you talk to the buyer? Yeah. Talk, my team so did you, I, I just supervised, you know, I just oversee. My team right. did everything. I pay him to do this, you know, as I say, I trade them once, you know, we, we do 10 minutes scrum meetings. So, and then every day, like we talk about deals. Like, I think we have like about quarter million in the pipeline right now. Yep. So it's just like, we talk about deals, you know, I like underwrite these deals myself too. But now I have my own dispo, dispo assistant, acquisition, junior acquisition. We got senior acquisition. So it's just like I'm always hiring. Like right now yep. I'm trying to build, I'm trying to get 20, uh, 10 more cold callers. So I'm trying to have 20 callers. And, and so now we got to add another acquisition, right? So we got three acquisitions. We're trying to add another lead manager. And then we already have our dispo team. So I'm trying to, you know, trying to get, trying to expand. Yeah. Love it. You're incredible. Absolutely incredible. How can people get a hold of you? So you can follow me on Instagram at iHustleBro, and my phone number is 847-791-2210. So you just text me, reach out to me. Let's do some deals together. Uh, and if you do have a deal, um, you could uh, go to my website, homerunequity.com. It's my JV website. You just submit a deal there, and then let my team go to work, right? We charge 35%, and we take care of the other part of the business, right? If you, once you lock it up, once you do the acquisitions, you, you have it under contract, Send us all the details and let us let our team say that, say that say that again. Uh, for some reason on your end, it's just cutting off randomly. It's been fine the whole time, but say say that again. We'll cut that out. So, uh, your website is what? Home Run Equity. And and what do you do on that? It's my JV website where we help um, other wholesalers sell deals. Um, so yeah, you just go to my website, submit a deal, and uh, let our team go to work. Right. So once you do. Uh, the first part of the business, right, which is the acquisition side, acquiring, you know, acquiring the property, locking it up, uh, let our team do the rest. So we basically, uh, you know, deal with the buyer, deal with the seller, do the showing, deal with the attorneys, deal with the title company, and basically get, you know, get us paid, right? So that's what we focus on um, there. So Awesome. Guys, we'll put the contact in the show notes. Abdullah, thank you so much for sharing your story. Absolutely incredible. Guys, reach out. Um, this business is, listen, the fundamentals are the same. The way that you go and interpret it, it's almost like art, the way that you can create your own business. But the fundamentals are the same. Step number one, you got to find your tribe. You got to find your community. You got to find, uh, you got to find the people that are going to support you and surround you and that are doing this and doing it on a high level. Number two, you got to find a model, right? What model are you going to follow? What, what, what model can you follow based on your, your situation? Number three, proof of concept. Do a deal. Get it done. Do a deal. Number four, build consistency so that you can do this full time. And number five, hire incredible talent so that you can pull yourself out of this business and, and work on, on, on filling your pipeline of assets that you can get passive cash flow from. And, Abdullah, you, 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 you've done it per, pitch it perfect. So... Picture perfect. There you go. So um, thank you. Thank you for being on here. Guys, reach out to him and uh, do some deals and, uh, and, and just l listen. At the end of the day, it comes down to uh, conversations and making offers. Conversations making offers. And that's what we need to focus on. And, and if you start that way on who can I talk to today that I can have a good conversation with and I can make an offer in their property, it starts snowballing and you're going to win. And that's it. That's it for our podcast. If you're interested 
in joining the most proactive community, the most proactive tribe in real estate investing. It is the Rhino Tribe. Go to wholesalinginc.com. Check it out, wholesalinginc.com. Check out all the testimonials. Check out the incredible community, the incredible amount of successful wholesalers from around the country. We've been doing this for 10 years, since 2013. Nobody, nobody has coached more successful real estate wholesalers than Wholesaling Inc. And uh, if it feels good in your gut, make sure that you sign up for a call. And uh, we look forward to working with you and embracing you with open arms into the Rhino Tribe. And that's it. Uh, I, will, I will end this podcast, as I always do, encouraging you to go out there and talk to people. Love you guys. See you next time.